Tusenfried is the premier amusement park in Norway. Owned by Parques Reunidos, this park is one of the most unique settings of any theme park. It is built on a big wooded hill, and many rides use this setting to their full advantage to offer sudden elevation changes or neat views. With the opening of Storm in 2023, this park now has eight different roller coasters, along with a unique dark ride and some large flat rides. So in this video, I will rank this park's top 10 rides and attractions. Before starting the countdown, I need to note two types of attractions that will be excluded. First, I skipped this park's small water park. While there was a mat racer and tube slide utilizing the hill, they didn't look too wild and I didn't want to get soaked before heading out to the airport. Second, you will not see any upcharge attractions such as the Sky Coaster or Dungeon Haunted Walkthrough. I wanted to try the latter, but it was unfortunately closed for my visit. Starting off the list at number 10 is ACOM NCOM. This aerodynamics log flume reminds me of Sawmill Plunge at Lake Compounds. It is set up similarly. You have a lift up a hill, then you have some slow turns among the trees, then the experience culminates with a decent drop down the hill. It's not super steep, nor large, but it's still enjoyable. Number 9, Lupin. This is a Vacoma Tornado model. I enjoyed my ride towards the back in this looping coaster. The loop was forceful, the turns had decent laterals, and the final corkscrew felt a bit floaty from the lack of speed. However, this ride is a neck chopper up front. Because of how the train is pushed into the turns, it can abruptly and uncomfortably toss you sideways. The laterals are applied much more comfortably further back in the train, so definitely try to ride there if you can. Number 8, Space Shot. This SNS drop tower is the park's tallest ride by far, standing 22 stories tall. The launch had an okay kick to it. Then the view at the top was stunning, especially if you're on the side looking down the hill. But unfortunately, the airtime at the top is extremely weak, which holds this ride back you only get a teeny tiny bit of airtime. Number 7, Super Splash. This mock water coaster is basically a glorified shoot the shoots. The little dip high above the ground was steeper than expected and almost offered airtime, but the highlight is the main drop sequence. The large drop takes forever to reach its max angle of descent, but when it does, you get a nice pop of airtime. Then the bunny hill offers weak but sustained floater airtime. The ride then culminates in a big splash that gets your upper body wet while keeping your shoes dry. That's the type of splash I love on water rides. Number 6, Thor's Hammer. This is an interesting dark ride from ETF. Literally built inside a cave, this ride follows Thor on an adventure. This is the Scandi version of the character, not the Disney version. There are a few physical props, but it's mostly a screen based adventure. The vehicle tilts and spins as you battle villains on screen, and it's well synchronized. The visuals were decent quality for a regional park, but I did find some of the final scenes a bit too dark when moving fast towards the end. Number 5, Spin Spider. This is one of the earlier Zamperla Giant discoveries, but as always, it is a great frisbee model. This one swings riders 14 stories into the air, offering some sweet views especially because it's located towards the top of the hill, and is intense too. The downswings offer nice speed and positive Gs. Then the 4 max swings offer solid floater airtime. Number 4, Ragnarok. This is a really good River Rapids ride built by Hafima. It is one of the best themed attractions at this park, as you pass some buildings and characters, most notably a dragon during the whirlpool sequence. And that whirlpool is the best part of the ride, it feels unnatural spiraling about like that on a River Rapids ride. Then you pass through a ton of waterfalls before encountering a short but steep drop for some more thrills. There aren't too many rapids in this one, which is a theme with Hafima Rapids rides, but there are two deceptive rapids towards the end that can get you quite wet, and there are also a few geysers for good measure. Number 3, Thunder Coaster. This is a rare Vacoma wood coaster, and it beautifully uses the park's terrain. You have a series of sizable drops down the hill that sneak up on you, particularly the second one. These drops offer good sustained floater airtime in the back rows. The rest of the coaster carries good speed, and there are some smaller bunny hills and turnarounds offering weak pops of airtime. 
but there are two things holding this coaster back. First, the Raya's Timberliner trains. That in itself isn't a problem, as I find the trains themselves comfortable, but the employees will staple you, which can make it trickier to appreciate this ride's airtime. Second, the Raya's shaky at points. The first two valleys in particular are downright brutal and violently shake the whole train. If this coaster were smoother, it probably would have moved up a spot or two. I have an entire review going more in depth, but this coaster is more positives than negatives. Number 2. Speed Monster This intimate accelerator coaster has a really cool setting on the hill. I love how the Norwegian loop in particular wraps around the escalators into the park. It is such a neat visual. Then the rise a diverse layout with airtime hills and inversions. But this coaster lacked the intensity I expected for the model. Outside of the Norwegian loop, which was a brilliant mix of airtime and positive G's, the coaster simply was not too intense, and that's weird to say about an accelerator coaster. The launch is a decent kick, but it's not the powerful gut punch you get on the other hydraulic launch coasters. Then the bunny hills in the second half only offered weak to decent pops of airtime. As I said in my review, this ride may be weak for an accelerator coaster, but it's still a fun ride and probably the park's most rewritable coaster. And coming in, number one is Storm the Dragon Legend. This is the park's new for 2023 attraction, and it is also the park's most intense ride. This is a prototype inverted infinity coaster from Gerslauer. The coaster starts off with an interesting swing launch sequence. The initial launch is laughably weak, but the second and third ones have solid kicks to them, and the stall on the reverse sidewinder fully inverts the back two rows, offering one of the single best hang time moments in the world if you're towards the back. Then the main layout consists of three different dive loops and a speed hill. While the layout does get a tad repetitive, the dive loops thankfully feel a bit different from each other. The later two have good positive G's, then the first one stands out for its airtime. But the best airtime moment by far is easily that bunny hill. It is taking blisteringly fast and offers strong ejector airtime, the biggest con with this coaster is the tracking. While the lap bar restraints are comfortable and freeing, the train has a really bad vibration in the valleys. As I said in my review, this didn't cause me a headache, but it wasn't a positive, so hopefully this doesn't worsen in future years because the ride's enjoyable otherwise. So those are my 10 favorite rides at Tusenfried in Norway. What are your favorite rides at this park? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.